Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make API requests from your React Native app. I have shown this before, but just with a simple GET request, this one's going to go into a bit more detail. Um, so first off, I'm just going to show you how to set up my local Python API that I've developed. I'll also link the code to the GitHub repo below, and also the video tutorial where I actually created this API. So. Once I've got the API running, I can head over to the app.js. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to be able to press a button and call different APIs. So my first API is just going to be a really simple get demo. So it's just going to get employees and they'll just call the employees endpoint of my API running on local host port 5000. So we're going to use that fetch um, call to call the API and we'll pass the API endpoint in. So once again, that's just going to be localhost 5000. Now that I've copied that link, I'm going to go ahead and restart that API. I'm just going to add slash employees to the end of that. So you can see that matches with the app route. Once I've done that, it's going to basically return a response. Um, what I'm going to want to do with that response is I'm going to want to log the status and the headers. That just sort of can give you a better idea of what's going on. For example, with a post, it'll have a location header which can be used to um, see where your other resources you can access them from or delete them from. So with, where you can put, delete or get a specific resource that you've just created. It basically gives you what ID the um, resource was created with. Then I'm going to want to return the um, JSON response. That's just going to be a promise that then evaluates to some JSON. So then I'm going to need to handle that um, JSON response. So inside this, I'm going to provide the handling for the result, which is the JSON. And also, if there's any error, then I'll handle that as well. And I'm just going to console log that result. Um, in your actual application, you'd be doing more than console logging, but for the purposes of this simple demo and for um, making this a reasonably short tutorial that demonstrates what it needs to, I'm just going to console log it. And you can choose to do whatever you want with the results. I'm also going to use that same code um, for get employees, multiple, um, the fetch part of that code. I'm just going to reuse that multiple times. I'm not going to bother about keeping the code tidy. I'm just going to do a simple copy and paste. Um, it'll just sort of make things a bit more simplistic to read um, and follow along with. So I'm going to have a button that when I press it will get the employees and console log them. If I go ahead and save that, then you'll see my get button appear. I can open up my terminal and when I click get, it console logs the status, the headers and the response, which is the different employees. So you can see it's status of 200, which is successful. And you can see different headers, including a bit of detail on what the server is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add another get endpoint, um, which allows me to get a very specific employee. So you can, you can access employees by their ID and it will return a single employee. So I'm just going to pass an ID in here and all I'm going to need to do is update this um, API endpoint to also include the ID of the employee. I 
I'm also going to want to add a new text input. The reason I'm wanting to add a new text input is so that I can get the um, ID from the user and then um, show that employee back. So it basically will get whatever um, employee the user is requesting. I'm going to need a bit of state management for that and I'm just going to specify the placeholder of employee ID so people know what to enter. I'm not doing any validation here. If you were creating a production app, you would do that. And I'm just going to specify some styling for the input. Basically, I'm going to want it to stretch out the width of the screen and have some padding and margin. So that's why I've got align self stretch and then just some margin and padding. That'll just make it easier to interact with. So I'll apply that style to the text input. And then I want to specify the value, which will be employee ID, and I'll set that up in a minute. And then I want to set my um, value when the text changes so i'm going to use set employee id to do that now if i go up i'm going to be able to specify the state but i'm going to first import use state from react Now that I've imported use state, I can define my state variable. So I've got employee ID and the setter for that is set employee ID. I'll use state and pass the default value in, which will be empty string. Basically that's saying that to start with, there'll be no string set against the employee ID. Text input, and I'll show that placeholder instead. Now, when I was actually calling set employee ID, I didn't actually pass the value to it. I'm going to need to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to do that here. And then I'm going to add a new button, which is get by ID. And what that's going to do is basically call that get employee function and pass in that get em the employee ID that's specified in the text input. So if you look here, you can see one, two, and three for ID. I'm going to get employee ID two. And you can see it returns the correct employee ID with the ID of 2. If I enter one that doesn't exist, it'll give me a 404. You can see that in the terminal, um, in the status, and also this error message that employee does not exist. You can also see that in the terminal that's running my API below. Now that I've got my two gets set up, I can go ahead and I can make a simple delete. The delete is basically going to take in the employee ID much like the get, except it's going to go ahead and delete the employee rather than get the employee. I'm just going to copy this method once again for simplicity. This isn't great in terms of code reuse, but um, it will make it easier for people to sort of understand and follow what's going on if they only need a specific HTTP call. So that's why I'm going about it this way. So basically you can pass some options to the fetch and I'm going to pass a method, which is the delete method, which basically means my delete HTTP endpoint will be called. You can also pass headers, but I don't actually need that for the delete. So if I click on, um, if I enter a, try to delete an employee that doesn't exist, it gives me a 404. 
and says employee does not exist. Now if I go ahead and try to delete an employee that does exist, so two, we can see that it works and that this employee has been deleted. If I do a get, you can see that the employee with ID two no longer exists. And that's just because my delete has been successful. So now that we've got a delete going, we can actually go ahead and um, add an update. So an update is very similar um, in terms of code, but what we're going to need is another text input, which takes in the employee name. And that's because that's the property we're going to want to update on the different employee um, models. So this time I'm going to have a, a set employee name and an employee name state variable. And I'm going to go ahead and define those above as well. So you can see I've got that text input now, but I still need to go ahead and add my um, function that will allow me to update the employee. And I also need to um, add a button that will allow me to update the employee. The update is actually represented in HTTP request by the put method. So that's the method that we're going to use this time instead of the um, delete. And also you can pass a body in, which will be the value that you want to update, represent the model you want to update. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm also going to need the name of the employee that I'm going to update. The endpoint will stay the same because I need to specify what ID I want to update. So the method is put. I can specify some headers for the content type, which is going to be a JSON content type. That's a very typical um, format of sending data. So you just specify the headers inside this little header object here. Then I'm going to want to specify the body. What I'm going to want to do is I want that to be JSON so I can use the function uh, json.stringify here. That's just a built-in JavaScript function. And I want to specify the name. So it's basically going to pass a JSON uh, data to my put endpoint with the name that I want to update the specific employee's ID's name to. So I've got my get. And you can see I've got Mary and Sally. I'm wanting to update employee ID free, and I'm going to give them the name they want to update them to. I'm going to update them to Joan. If I go click update, it says that it's been successful. I've got 200 returned. If I click that get by ID, I can see that ID employee ID free has the name Joan. And if I get all, it still has the name Joan. So you can see that it's been successfully updated. Finally, the last thing you might want to do is you might want to create a new resource, so a new employee. To do that, you're going to use the post method and it's going to look much like update employee, except because you're creating, it's going to create the ID for you. You don't need to specify the ID. So I'm going to remove that ID parameter from my endpoint. I'm going to update the method to a post and from there, it should work pretty much the same as my put or my update. So I'm going to copy that button and I'm just going to change that text to create employee. And I don't need to pass the employee ID this time, just the name. 
I'm also going to update the title of the button to just say create. A reminder that I don't have any validation on the text input. If you did want to do that, you'd need to go ahead and add that yourself. Um, in a production app, you would want to do so. So yeah, I've got this post and if I uh, um, change the name, it's going to pass this new employee and create this new Gerald employee. It's got 201 status, which means created. And you can see that location header, which basically shows you where you can access that, diff that new resource from. If I do a get, you can see that my new employee with the ID of four is existing in there with the, um, with the name of Gerald. So it's all working correctly. So yeah, you can basically call any of the post, uh, any of the get, put or delete using that location header. That's basically a key thing to remember. And I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you call APIs from your React Native app. All this code will be on GitHub. And if you've liked this tutorial, please like and subscribe for more content.